I bought every new fragrance at Macy's. From highly anticipated fragrances like Lamar Elixir to re-releases like Tom Ford Cafe Rose, I bought every new fragrance Macy's had that I didn't have. So fellas, we have a lot to unbox. When accounted for niche designer and indie fragrance brands, hundreds of fragrances release every year and determining which fragrances to purchase can be time consuming, confusing, and expensive. So as your resident fragrance expert, I'm not only gonna tell you which of these fragrances I believe are worth your money, but also tell you the easiest way you could potentially get one of these fragrances for free. But before I tell you how you can get one of these new 2023 fragrance releases for free, let's hop into the box and see what we got. First up, we have Tom Ford's Cafe Rose, which I'm expecting to be amazing, but also not everyone's cup of tea, or shall I say coffee. Originally, Cafe Rose was a part of the Private Blends collection and became vaulted or discontinued, and now it's back a part of the Signature collection, which are Tom Ford's more affordable fragrance offerings, but this isn't the first time we've seen this happen. To name a few, we've seen this trend with Ombre Leather, Beau de Jour, and Costa Azura. Now, Cafe Rose is primarily marketed towards women, but if it's anything like it once was, then men can easily get away with rocking it. Yep, Cafe Rose is still extremely elegant. Immediately you get this warm, naughty floral fragrance that's rich in spice. That rose, coriander, and cardamom are stars of the show here, and the coffee seems to be more of an NPC. Next, we have Phantom Parfum, which was made to be a more intense version of the original. And according to Paco Rabanne, Phantom Parfum is supposed to be richer in lavender, a more addictive blend of vanilla, and a seductive take on vetiver. That's interesting. I must say that I prefer the presentation on Phantom Parfum over the original as it gives the bottle this more edgy feel, but like the original, I still think that this one would stand out on the shelves. Oh, that's good. <laughs> the opening here is amazing. It either has bergamot or lemon or both, and it gives it this crisp, fresh start. The lavender here doesn't go unnoticed and then that vanilla here really provides it this overall comforting feel in conjunction with the vetiver that's supposed to be in the base here, I'm sure will make this one super alluring. Moving on, we have Lamar Elixir and this is one that I'm super excited to try. When it comes to the Lamar series of fragrances, it's hard to find a dud. However, I was not a fan of Fleur de Lamar. In fact, I threw that one in the trash shortly after purchasing it. But let's see what we have here. Lamar Elixir is supposed to be the most intense representation of the Lamar fragrance lineups, and this thing is good. As you would expect with most Lamar flankers, this one will be best suited for that cooler weather. So fall, winter, and early spring should be prime for Elixir. Personally, I'm a huge fan of Gourmand fragrances, and for me, this one takes the cake. There are some familiar notes here is that lavender and mint find its way into this formulation. However, this one has a gourmand feel to the overall composition. That amber cord, honey, vanilla, and benzoin make Lamar Elixir a fragrance that I believe many of you out there will find to be well worth the buy. Ralph Lauren's Ralph Club Elixir Spray is up next, and this is the third addition to the Ralph Club's collection. Like the Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrance we just covered, this is also an Elixir Spray and marketed to those who use yearn to stand out from the crowd. But hopefully, we're standing out in a good way. So far, this one is deeper and richer than the Auto Parfum and the Parfum that's come before it. Here we have a bitter citrus opening on account of the grapefruit here, but I do find this one to be far better than the Dolce & Gabbana light blue fragrance flankers that have that hyper-realistic grapefruit. So far, this one is deeper and richer than the Auto Parfum and the Parfum fragrances that have come before it. It's earthy, but still fresh, and there's the spiciness and subtle smokiness or leather within this one as well. So far, Ralph's Club Elixir is more mature than the original, but it doesn't smell old as it still has this youthfulness to the fragrance. Now, this wouldn't be the first fragrance I recommend to a freshman in high school, but maybe to a freshman in college or university. And by the way, shout out to all my people watching in the UK as well. 
like the others before, I'm not sure what there is to not like about Ralph's Club Elixir. And obviously, this is just the first impression, but so far, so good. Next, let's dive into the world of Coach with Coach Green. And truth be told, I'm expecting big things from Coach Green. It kind of sounds like I'm talking about a person, right? I've been a fan of the Coach Fragrance lineup since Coach for Men launched, and that's one I often recommend on the channel. When it comes to good designer fragrances at an affordable price point, Coach is typically a company you can rely on if you want to smell great. So, Let's see if this one lives up to the legacy. Nice looking bottle here, huh? That's good. It opens with the refreshing kick of bergamot and it's crisp and there's something about Coach Green that's juicy. Immediately, you can tell this one's for warmer weather so it's not one that you have to run out and get at the moment but if you're still experiencing warmer temperatures in your area, then you might wanna get your nose on it. I'm also getting this tropical feeling from this fragrance, but not tropical in the sense of coconut. That stated, there's this herbal mintiness that immediately follows its inviting opening. Although I like Coach Open Road, I can already tell you I like this one more in the long run. Now, I'm not implying that they're similar, but looking back at recent Coach releases, I can already tell that this one's a few notches better. The bottle here is also almost like a work of art. Now, there's not anything special about the bottle, but this green gradient here is going to look real nice on the shelf. I have a confession. I don't own many Carolina Herrera fragrances, and I didn't have any intention on picking this fragrance up, but I had to stay true to the video. Now, there are a few standouts for the house, but I typically don't feel compelled to stop everything I'm doing and run out to find the latest Carolina Herrera fragrance, but with this one, it might be different. Okay, now this one starts off aromatic and clean, but it's also sweet. I get some extra volume on this fragrance, which is likely on account to maybe some coffee or tonka in the background. The opening also possesses a healthy dose of lavender, and although there's some sweetness here, like a lot, it doesn't come off as cloying. Also, on first spray, you can tell that this one is a cool weather fragrance, so this is gonna be best suited for fall and winter, but with that said, I don't find that this one is exclusively for cool weather. And just in case I forgot to mention, and this one is Carolina Herrera 212 VIP Black I Love New York Edition Eau de Parfum. The write-up says that this one is supposed to be bold, but I don't find this fragrance to be dairy. Also, I'm not sure if it's just me, but the marketing photos for this fragrance almost reminded me like a bootleg scene from Twilight. So far, this one's good, but not great, but we'll see how this one holds up and see if it changes my mind in the official wear test. The next release we have here is YSL's Myself, and this is another fragrance I have have high hopes for. Generally speaking, YSL does a great job of creating fragrances that are easy to wear, mass appealing, and gonna compliments. So I'm hoping for more of the same with this one. Cha -ching, the presentation is reminiscent to one of the fragrances we might find in their exclusive lineup, but what about that juice though? Okay, let me start by saying that this one is good, but it's not what I was expecting. The presentation was making me believe that this one's gonna be dark and opulent, but it's kind of bright and vibrant. There's bergamot on the top, definitely some hits of citrus, and really it's in line to what I said earlier. It's easy to wear, it's mass appealing, and it will likely garner compliments. There's some floral and wood notes here as well, and I don't find this fragrance to be unique, but that's okay. The floral undertones really give it this unisex feel, and I feel like anyone would be okay wearing this fragrance. This could also be a year-round fragrance, but spring, summer, and fall at a minimum. And now, as promised, I'm gonna tell you how you could potentially get one of these fragrances for free. I actually purchased two of each of these fragrances so I can have one and you can have one as well. So if you want one of these fragrances for free, then leave a comment down below letting me know which of these fragrances you would love to have and I'll be choosing one winner at random for each of the fragrances mentioned on today's list. And if you haven't already, I recommend that you watch this video where I unbox some of the best fragrances of 2023.